Leprosy or Hansen's disease is known as Kushto in India. Leprosy is caused by bacterial infection and mainly affects the skin, peripheral nerves, the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, eyes and also some internal organs. As the bacilli affect the nerves, patients lose sensation in their hands, feet and eyes. This often ends up in disfigurement as sores caused by injuries get ignored because injuries no longer hurt. Often, such disfigurements manifest into disabilities. These deformities then give rise to social stigma. Such stigmas have added to the complexity of the leprosy situation in the country. Therefore, in the Indian context, leprosy stands not only as a medical challenge, but more so as a socio-medical problem. At present, leprosy is mostly prevalent in the tropical countries. But this is not because of the climate. In fact, leprosy once affected every continent and since time immemorial left behind a terrifying image for humankind. India has recently declared that it has achieved the tag of elimination of leprosy as the number of cases is now just below one in every 10,000 people. Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Delhi and the two union territories, Chandigarh and Dadar and Nagar Haveli, are still lagging behind. But on the whole, India has eliminated leprosy as a public health problem. The village we went to the high endemic village where population is only 700 and the number of mucus detection is 8. So uh, the prevalence is very high here and if uh, distribution of MDT, multi drug therapy is not uh, going on, then uh, mucus detection will be high and leprosy will be spreading. Earlier, Leprosy was regarded as a hereditary disease or divine punishment for sin. It was Gerhard Henrik Armour Hansen, a Norwegian physician, who first identified the bacterium Mycobacterium leprae as the causative agent in leprosy. In 1873, when he announced the discovery, he was unaware that it was a bacterium and received little support from the contemporary scientific community. After six years, in 1879, Hansen gave tissue samples to Albert Ludwig Sigmund Nesa, a German physician who successfully stained the bacteria and announced his findings in 1880, claiming to have discovered the disease-causing organism. Mycobacterium leprae is an intracellular obligate rod-shaped parasite with parallel sides and rounded ends and reside mostly in the nerves. They are observed under the microscope by staining skin smears with the red dye, basic fuchsin, followed by an acid treatment. In size and shape, Mycobacterium leprae closely resembles the Mycobacterium tuberculosis, that is the organism causing tuberculosis. But Mycobacterium tuberculosis requires a stronger acid treatment as compared to Mycobacterium leprae. Leprosy is not hereditary and children of mothers with leprosy are not born with it. However, children who live in close contact with someone for a considerable period of time who has untreated leprosy are most likely to get infected. Leprosy is infectious, but less infectious than many known infectious diseases. Recent reports suggest that the disease transmits primarily through contact with abraded skin, mucus or through inhalation of infected material. Once the bacteria enter the body, they multiply and take for hosts the cells of the macrophages in the skin and then slowly destroy them. 
They then enter the neighboring Schwann cells, destroy these, and multiplying spread the infection in distant areas of the body through blood. All people who get infected by Mycobacterium leprae do not get the disease. Leprosy can spread only from untreated Mycobacterium leprae positive cases. Further, it affects mostly those individuals who have low resistance to the disease. Leprosy pathologically you can classify in five uh, patterns or spectrum we say having two poles one is a resistant pole another is a susceptible pole the resistant pole starts with tuberculoid and the susceptible pole ends in with lepromatous at one end of the spectrum you will have some people who recognize this a little later and so you will they will manifest it as a small patch in which there is loss of sensation that means that the bacteria is there it has affected the nerves, it is surrounding the nerves. The bacteria has been killed or it is being opposed by the resistance of the body. And because of this fight, there has been some damage to the nerves surrounding. This is a collateral damage. And since these nerves have been damaged, there is loss of sensation in that area. Okay. Usually a person who manifests like this, we call it tuberculoid leprosy, it's at one end of the spectrum. It is quite possible that these people may not require any treatment, that the disease has uh, healed because the, uh, because the immune mechanism of the body has succeeded in destroying the bacteria. We can say that in people who have just say just one patch, not more than that, and that to a small patch. At the other end of the spectrum, we have what we call lepromatous leprosy, where the person's immune mechanism does not recognize the bacterial proteins as being foreign at all. So the bacteria invade the body, they multiply, they colonize the whole body. And in these people, if we just take a slit smear from the skin, we will find that uh, under the microscope we will be able to see the bacteria. So this we call lepromatous leprosy. It causes damage slowly over a long period of time, but the damage is immense. There is a lot of disfigurement. There is what we call glove and stocking kind of an, uh, loss of sensation of the hands and feet. Because these people have lost their sensation of the hands and the feet, they do not protect it. And so periodically there is some injury and uh, the injury becomes worse. Then there is loss of bones, there is loss of tissue. And gradually you may find that they lose their fingers, they may lose their toes. Also, they may lose their nasal lining. Sometimes the bone which supports the nose falls out and they have a sunken nose. They have loss of eyebrows. Males can have lo loss of moustache and beard. So this is on the lepromatous end of the spectrum. In between this tuberculoid and lepromatous, we have a part of the spectrum which we call borderline. In this borderline, the body's immune mechanism recognizes the bacteria as being foreign. The bacterial load is very high and so where the bacteria colonize parts of the body near the skin and also near the nerves and at all these sites the bacteria are attacked by the immune mechanism of the body and this causes a lot of damage to the truncal nerves, the large mainline nerves which are coming there and this is actually a collateral damage to the nerves and because of this the person can get many deformities and disabilities. They get clawing of the hands, they get that deformity, they get a foot that just drops which they cannot elevate again. They have loss of sensation in the particular parts of the body supplied by that nerve. So there is a lot of collateral damage. So it can affect two, three, six, eight, ten nerves in the body at different sites in both hands, both feet, both eyes. And this causes a lot of deformity. Most of the deformities and disabilities are seen here because the bacterial load is high, the body recognizes that being for, as, as being for foreign, and there is a fight going on. Because of this, there's a lot of collateral damage in various parts of the body. This is the most damaging kind of leprosy. It's called borderline. Now, this borderline does not stay borderline all the time. It might move towards the borderline lepromatous, or it might move towards the tuberculoid spectrum where we call it borderline tuberculoid. 
And when this movement takes place, we say the patient is in reaction. And this reaction causes more and more uh, uh, nerve damage. Leprosy bacteria does, is not a very active bacteria like other bacteria. Now, other bacteria, multiply, they multiply uh, uh, by lo logarithmically. They multiply. Uh, 1 becomes 2, 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16, 16 becomes 32. It goes on like that. Within 20 minutes, 80 minutes, it goes on like that, within hours. But the mycobacterium leprae multiplies very, very, very slowly. In fact, we think right now it multiplies only once in, once in 15 days it becomes two. So it's very difficult to culture. Hmm. And we have not found a medium to culture such bacteria. The only medium we find to culture such bacteria are the foot pads of mice. Then there are certain, there are certain varieties of mice called nude mice, which where the resistance is removed artificially. And then there is an armadillo. These are, in these animals, the bacteria is able to multiply and spread. Diagnosing the early signs of leprosy is not difficult. From the time a person is first infected with the bacterium, it often takes three or four years for the first signs of the disease to appear. Onset of leprosy is usually gradual and insidious. However, the disease may also appear suddenly and may be associated with fever, depression and pain. Usually, the first sign of leprosy is a skin lesion or patch. The skin lesion can be single or multiple. A large variety of skin lesions are found. Usually, a skin lesion is less pigmented than the surrounding normal skin. But sometimes the lesion is reddish or copper colored. They may also vary as flat, raised or nodular in structure. Sensory loss is another of the cardinal signs of leprosy. The skin lesion may show loss of sensation to pinprick or light touch. If the skin patch has loss of sensation, then one should feel for enlarged nerves. The nerves feel like an electric wire and can be rolled over the bone underneath. But nerve thickening by itself without sensory loss or muscle weakness is often not a reliable sign of leprosy. If we take a slit skin smear from this, if we see mycobacterium leprae, then that itself is diagnostic of leprosy. So in these patients who do not have any of these three signs, if we just find some leprosy bacteria in their slit skin smear under microscope, then definitely it is a case of leprosy. Leprosy can also be classified for administrative purpose on the basis of clinical manifestations and skin smear results. Patients showing single patch and negative skin smear of the lesion are grouped as having porcibacillary leprosy or PB, while those showing multiple patches with positive smears are known to be suffering from multibacillary leprosy or MB. In India, leprosy was first described in the Shustruta Samhita from around 600 BC. Even at that time, the treatment of leprosy patients with Chalamugra oil was known. Shustruta Samhita also describes rhinoplasty for a sunken nose and neurolysis for neuritis. Till the 70s, the only allopathic drug available to treat leprosy was Dapson, which is also known to cause hemolysis, that is, the destruction of red blood cells. Dapson also promotes allergic reaction as a major side effect, and patients needed to consume Dapson for years to get cured. Clofazimine is another drug for the treatment of leprosy and has the additional property of being effective as an anti-inflammatory agent. Since 1970, rifampicin 
A semi-synthetic derivative of rifamycin B produced by Streptomyces mediterranei established as a highly potent bactericidal drug in killing Mycobacterium leprae due to its ability to inhibit ribonucleic acid synthesis. Rifampicin has, it affects the liver, it causes hepatitis, it can cause hepatitis and it also can cause reddish discoloration of the urine, the tears and which may cause the patient to worry and stop the medicine. So we, we explain to the patient about this discoloration also. The problems of defaulting drug resistance and bacterial persistence had led the World Health Organization to conduct a drug trial on the island of Malta in 1970. After the success of the trial, the World Health Organization study group recommended the multidrug therapy or MDT in 1981, a combination of capsule rifampicin, tablet dapson, and capsule clofazimine for the treatment of leprosy. MDT is multidrug therapy. We give we cannot treat the disease with one drug because the bacteria can develop resistance against that drug. We treat it with three drugs. Now when we give these three drugs, they act by different mechanisms to kill the bacteria. With multi-drug therapy, the infectious patients become non-infectious rapidly. However, the treatment has limited success with the hypopigmented patches, sensory loss, lack of sweating, loss of hair follicles, and the other consequences of leprosy. Though multidrug therapy has its limitations and cannot restore damaged nerves to normal function, in the early st stages of nerve damage, function of the nerves can be restored by giving steroids. These steroids prevent nerve damage by preventing the fight between the bacteria and the immune mechanism and thus prevents the collateral damage of nerve damage. Because of this, nerve damage can be restricted and sometimes even reversed. In the later stages, we can only restrict the nerve damage. And beyond that, whatever damage has occurred, the functions of those can be, to some extent, reverted by conservative means, by a change in the patient's lifestyle, or by surgery in the really bad cases. There are methods of correcting deformity. Like, for instance, a person who has lost his eyebrows can have the eyebrows restored by surgery. A person whose nose has collapsed can have the nose straightened out by surgery. There are many patients whom we see around us who do not have any fingers. They have lost their function completely, but this does not mean the situation is hopeless. There are methods by which we can surgically correct these deformities to some extent so that these fingers and these hands are functional for the patient and the patient can carry on activities of daily living. A person whose hands have got a deformity of a clawing or a foot drop for the foot or lag of thalamus in which the patient is unable to close the eyes, these can all be corrected by surgery. Ulcers occur because the person has lost sensation. Because they lose sensation, they lose, the, the nerves are damaged, they have lost the sensation of pain. Now pain is a very protective sensation. ये हाथ हुआ चाय पीते हुआ जख्म हो गया फट गया चाय पिया कोई भात खा लिया गरम तो आग ताप लिया फोका मार दिया उसमें जख्म में हाथ बर्बाद हो गया जख्म होते होते छोटा होते होते जख्म हुआ फिर गल अपने मने गिरने लगता छोटा हो गया Suppose a person has lost sensation of one foot he is liable to damage that foot further and further so we have certain suggestions for a change in lifestyle like for instance don't stand if you can help it Sit. If you have to stand, please keep shifting your weight from one foot to the other as often as possible. Don't walk if you can help it. Use a vehicle. If you can't, if you have to walk, walk short distances. If you have to walk long distances, take frequent breaks. Take rest frequently. Uh, take short steps. Don't take long steps. Walk slowly. Don't walk fast. Every night, inspect your feet. Inspect the soles of your feet. Look for warmth or redness. If there is warmth or redness, have it attended to, take rest or consult a physician. Then, if you have wounds of the feet, rest heals all wounds. 
unless it is complicated by say infection or by involvement of underlying structures, in which case the complication has to be treated and then the person has to be rested. Resting need not just be bed rest. You can rest the foot while you carry on your work. There are methods of resting the foot within a plaster cast. And within this plaster cast, the foot will be at rest even when the patient walks. To treat ulcer under allopathy, proper foot care, antibiotic coverage and bed rest are advised. Patients are discouraged exposing ulcers to water. This makes the person disabled and handicapped as ulcers are never cured. Bhorusha, the Society for the Welfare of the Handicapped Persons at Durgapur, West Bengal, took up leprosy as a challenge to homeopathy under the leadership of Dr. Dhrubo Chakraborty. Dr. Chakraborty has been working on the issue for more than 20 years and has identified a small group of medicines in homeopathy, claiming high percentage of cure with no side effects or relapse. Our uh, research is totally based on uh, honey minion principle, that is similar, similar was cure in time, similar symptoms. First of all, we collect all the symptoms from the patients, from the leprosy patient. We diagnosed the uh, cases by pathological investigation, pathological testing. Then we collect all the symptoms, which is known as the uh, total group symptoms, comprise of a particular symptom, uh, general symptom, um, and disease symptom, all that. And after that, we, we collect the similar symptoms, which is known as the uh, accumulated similar symptoms in methodical pyramid. We follow the methodical pyramid uh, for uh, selection of medicine. And in this context, we also uh, study the miasmatic study. We have uh, three miasms in uh, homeopathy. Sora, syphilis, and psychosis. We found that uh, lepromatous leprosy are very similar with uh, antisyphilitic uh, miasm. So we uh, give them antisyphilitic medicine to the lepromatous patient and achieved a very good result. It is the characteristics of homeopathic treatment to lay more stress on individualization and make no attempt to find a common drug for the specific disease. In this context, Dr. Chakraborty and his team of researchers proposed a new theory of generalization by the methodical pyramid. All leprosy affected persons, those who were newly diagnosed and did not receive the conventional MDT treatment, and those who have completed MDT course and released from treatment with disability, are given homeopathic treatment at Bhorusha. The society also runs a home for leprosy cured persons, funded by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment Government of India, to take care of persons with severe multiple disabilities. The home at Durgapur has a provision to accommodate 40 persons. The results tell a brilliant success story. Patients regain sensations and hyperpigmented patches gain back their normal skin color. The normal texture of the skin is revived as sweat glands and sebaceous glands restart functions as normal. Histopathological reports confirm his clinical findings. The lesion had changed from, suppose, borderline tuberculoid to uh, tuberculoid to borderline tuberculoid, lepromatous to borderline lepromatous, 
with regeneration evidence of skin adnexial tissues like uh, the sweat glands, the sebaceous gland, the hair follicle, the nerve regeneration was also seen. Uh, and nerve generation was very evidently said that uh, not only me, uh, some other doctor had also seen. So this is what I can say that homeopathy treatment has an edge over the allopathic treatment. The results also show that stiffness of joints loosened up with restoration of grip strength. <laughs> Even plantar ulcers were completely cured within a very short time frame with loss of recurrence. The patients under homeopathic treatment were advised to perform normal activity during the course of treatment. This not only saves the patient from becoming immobile and disabled, but also effectively cures ulcers. So after the treatment we found that within six months out of 40 patients 37 had completely cured ulcer. And uh, in the follow-up investigation also we observed that there was no recurrence of ulcer, which is usually very common with conventional treatment. We had also performed sensory loss assessment uh, in these patients because we found that even after MDT, these people did not have sensory regain. And our results showed that in the hands, there was sensory regain to the extent of 43.6 to 65.5% and in the feet there was about 28% to 44% regain of sensation. So we feel, I feel that we have uh, gained a significant success with our treatment. We hope to do further in the future. At the rehabilitation center run by Bharusha, leprosy cured persons are given vocational training in different occupations to facilitate their return to mainstream society. It is a small attempt to irradiate leprosy socio-medically. Borussia is going to the villages, finding out the people who are suffering from this. Normally people do not come. They are to be brought over. That Borussia is there. With the statistics, one in thousand or in thousand how many people are there. And these are the jobs, a social job, government job. As a private organization, Borussia is doing this job and lessening the burden of the government as well as the hospitals here, as well as the industries who has got peripheral activities and part of the